On January 29th, the USA Today published an article in which they criticized Rand Paul and titled them something that not a lot of people have been able to call them before through the media, a troll. And in this, they cited a lot of ways in which he used social media as a platform to make fun of other politicians. But perhaps no better example exists than when Rand Paul used Twitter to tweet the following. A picture of Hillary Clinton, Jeb Bush, and Mitt Romney, and he captioned it. Same old candidates. Hashtag things to run away from. And in this, we see Rand Paul is totally comfortable with the image that he portrays as something that's new, where we see that we're riddled with too much familiarity within politics. And in a country where everything is valued to be what's the newest or freshest idea, it seems that in 2016, Rand Paul will be the equivalent of the iPhone 7. And in that, we're faced with today's question. Will Rand Paul be the GOP's 2016 presidential nominee? And much like the iPhone 7 will probably drop in 2016, and a lot of people will probably buy it for very silly reasons, Rand Paul will in fact be the presidential nominee for the Republican Party in 2016. And we can understand this and see it through three different parts that we have to look at. We have to look at essentially who his voting base is. And so these three voting bases that we need to look at are first, the far right, of course, second, the rank and file GOP establishment, and third, the independents. But first, let's go ahead and talk about the GOP far right. When we look at the far right, we see that a lot of these people can be characterized as Tea Party voters. T standing for taxed enough already, an acronym that they like to argue for. And generally, they are the more conservative group of the GOP. And so we can see that there are two examples of arguments that Rand Paul has had that actually would make sure that a voter base within the Tea Party would ally to support him. And we can look at that through balancing the budget or through common core rejection. But first, on balancing the budget, the Hill of January 20th explains that one issue that Rand Paul is, advocate, uh, is a huge advocate about was brought to light in his response to the State of the Union address that Barack Obama had made recently. In this, he said, well, contrary to what Barack Obama would have you believe, the country isn't all wealth. We need to balance the budget because that's one of the fundamental things that we have as a problem. Regardless of how good our economy looks to be, we need to make sure that our budget isn't as grotesque and meant to tax you as much dollars as it has been. And this is, of course, something that the taxed enough already party has already been in agreement with. But we can also see it through Common Core. Now, it's no secret that a lot of people don't like Common Core, regardless of what side of the aisle they stand on. But the Tea Party would probably ally themselves with Rand Paul because of the way he characterized it. As Bloomberg of January 29th reports, Rand Paul used a term to describe Common Core that would only be used by someone who would identify with the far right traditionally. He titled it, anti-American propaganda. Mm -hmm. Now, in an example where someone would consider something to be anti-American propaganda, it seems that the same party who says that anyone who thinks Chris Kyle isn't a hero is a communist, then Rand Paul's definitely going to get their votes. So whether it be through balancing the budget or through referring to Common Core as anti-American propaganda, it seems he absolutely has the potential to collect votes from the far right. But now we have to look at the GOP establishment because it's hard to balance the two of those things, much like it's hard to balance the budget, Rand. But we'll go ahead and talk about the fact that the GOP establishment is something he needs. The Rand Paul's Tea Party can be considered something on the fringe, but the majority of the party is always going to be the GOP establishment, which is why he needs to take consideration of them. And he will, through two things. First of all, through Mitch McConnell. And second, through scapegoats. So first of all, through Mitch McConnell. While a lot of people like to think of Mitch McConnell as a contrarian to Barack Obama's agenda, it seems the attitude has been really changed in recent days. Ever since the majority has been taken in the Senate and the House by the Republican Party, the agenda has been more along the lines of trying to get agreements in with Barack Obama and get legislation passed. In this, this is really important because Rand Paul is one of the more important members who can actually deal with Obama. In fact, he's actually tried to give lessons to Barack Obama on how to balance the budget that he calls for. So regardless of how much he jeers the president, he actually only wants him to make sure that he's passing good legislation, as the Washington Post of, uh, of November 7th argues. Furthermore, the Washington Post on November 7th argues that Mitch McConnell's endorsement of Rand Paul in 2016 is a huge check mark for the GOP establishment, and one that's heavily going to advantage him when it comes to getting the votes of rank and file members. But we can also look to an article from the New York Times of January 28th, which explains that unlike his counterparts, he has a lot of scapegoats. Whether they be Ted Cruz or Scott Walker, people who aren't largely considered to be part of the GOP establishment, and people who unfortunately have a habit of putting their feet in their mouths especially Ted Cruz, a person who arguably is the cause of a lot of filibusters that have happened and was the arguable cause of the government shutdown that we saw last year. 
the fact that this is so against the GOP establishment and a person like Ted Cruz is someone who Mitch McConnell absolutely does not endorse, we can see that essentially Rand Paul has the vote of the GOP, whether it be through leadership or through the fact that he's just more electable. Which, is bring us, uh, which brings us to our third and final point. He's electable largely because he's a very moderate, relatively agreeable person. And we can see that this will allow him to collect the votes of independence, which largely skew right anyway now. But first, look to an article from the Huffington Post of, of November 17th, which argues that his stance on foreign policy is one that's largely in line with the general populace of America. And those can be looked at through Cuba or through Iraq. In Cuba's case, relieving the embargoes was something he greatly supported. Compare that to his colleague Marco Rubio, though, who completely argued that those embargoes need to be, uh, need to be put in place still. But Rand Paul argues that that's a nation that we need to deal with because it, communist nations aren't typically something that we don't deal with right now. We still deal with China and we still deal with Vietnam. But there's not a good reason to not deal with Cuba, especially when our embargoes hurt their people. And secondly, we can look to an article from the Associated Press of January 20th, which argues that Rand Paul isn't a typical politician in any terms. He takes a lot of stances that aren't mainstream that tend to be a little bit more liberal. For example, the legalization of marijuana for recreational use or restoring voting rights to felons in the United States. So the simple fact of the matter is that whatever side you stand on, it seems you can find something to be agreeable with Rand Paul. And because of that, we can see that Rand Paul can collect the votes of independence. So, in returning to today's question, will Rand Paul be the GOP's 2016 presidential nominee? We can answer yes. And he can because he can collect the far right, he can collect the GOP establishment, and lastly, he can collect the independence. So much like the new iPhone is going to be a sell in 2016, we can see that Rand Paul's sell is going to be too easy to purchase. And we'll see a lot of people lining up to buy the newest idea, the Rand Paul ideas.